My dear students, today we are going to discuss about arbitrary arrest and detention of women and children. Administration of justice is one of the fundamental functions of the state. It refers to maintenance of law and order in a politically organized society by using the force of state. Arrest and detention are indispensable with criminal justice system. However, the international human rights laws, the constitution of India as well as statutory penal laws prohibit arbitrary arrest and detention. The rights of arrested persons are also guaranteed in the constitution of India and the Code of Criminal Procedure, which also provides special provisions for protection of women and children when they are arrested. Women and children have the risk of being the victim of atrocities at the time of arrest and during detention in the custody. The northeastern states of India have still been affected by insurgency and different types of conflicts for the last many years. The states are one of the most underdeveloped region of the country having high rate of unemployment, illiteracy and a lack of communication etc. These factors directly or indirectly affect the life of women and children of the region. The very foundation of any civilized system of law is that no person can be put in jail unless he or she is fairly tried and convicted. Women and children normally commit petty, low-violent offenses such as theft and fraud. They came from marginalized part of society and they tend to have a background of physical and emotional abuse mental health problems and alcohol and the drug dependency. In many countries, the majority of female prisoners have been convicted of drug-related offenses. But women and the children are rarely major players in the drug trade. Over and above, the number of women arrested for security reasons related to armed conflict or internal disturbances is also very small in comparison with that of men, mainly because they are less likely to be perceived as combatants or potential combatants. Women and children of the northeastern regions of the country are not able to escape from atrocities resulted from insurgency, prolonged deteriorating law and other problems, and the different types of conflicts. A memorandum submitted to the UN Special Rapporteur on Violence Against Women, its causes and consequences by the Civil Society Coalition on Human Rights in Manipur, reveals that more than 100 women were arrested and detained by security forces on the allegation of being the members of proscribed organizations during the period 2009 to 2013. Besides, it seems that arbitrary arrest and detention has become a routine issue in Manipur. The Asian Center for Human Rights reported a case of illegal detention of an 11-year-old girl at the police station in Manipur. It is reported that in August 2009, a daughter of S. Dewand of Nomai Kongmai Laikai was illegally detained for five days at Mayang Imphal police station in Imphal. The victim was student of sixth standard and was picked up by the combined team of Imphal West Police Commando and personnel of 12 Maratha Light Infantry of the Indian Army from her home. The combined team could not arrest her parents who were accused of providing assistance to a band group from their house. The personnel asked the whereabouts of her parents 
and the victim could not stain the poisoning and fainted. The combined team took her away on the pretext of taking her to the hospital. However, the combined team handed her over to the Mayang Imphal police station. It was also reported that the victim was further interrogated at the police station and was finally released after five days. The adoption of Universal Declaration of Human Rights 1948 is the milestone in the history of promotion and protection of human rights in the globe. Article 9 of the Declaration provides that no one shall be subjected to arbitrary arrest, detention, or exile. The International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights ICCPR 1966 is a legally binding international human rights document. The commitment of the international community for the protection of civil and political rights is being realized through this covenant. Article 9 of the covenant not only prohibits arbitrary arrest and detention, but also guarantees basic rights of the arrested person, which includes right to be informed the reason for arrest and the charges level against him or her, right to a speedy trial to decide the lawfulness of arrest and detention, and right to compensation if the arrest and detention is unlawful. The Convention on the Rights of Child 1989 is the most comprehensive and complete international human rights document ever adopted by international community for the promotion and protection of child rights. The Convention is based on four cardinal principles. Article 37 of the Convention protects child from arbitrary arrest and detention. Arrest and detention or Imprisonment of a child shall be in conformity with law and shall be used only as a measure of last resort and for the shortest appropriate period of time. The convention formulated last resort principle at the time of arrest of child and such child should be separated from adult at the detention center. The Constitution of India guarantees human rights in the form of fundamental rights under Chapter 3 of the Constitution, which is considered as the cornerstone of the Constitution. Any law which is not in conformity with any provisions of the Part 3 of the Constitution shall be void. Article 22 of the Constitution of India not only provides protection against arbitrary arrest and detention, but also stipulates fundamental, basic and minimum rights of the arrested persons. The article provides four fundamental rights of the arrested person. Number one, right to be informed of grounds of arrest. Number two, right to be defended by a lawyer of his own choice. Number third, right to be produced before a magistrate. Number four, freedom from detention beyond 24 hours except by the order of the magistrate. In Yogendra Kumar versus State of Uttar Pradesh and others, the Supreme Court observed that an arrest cannot be met simply because it is lawful for a police officer to do so. The existence of power to arrest is one thing, and the justification for the exercise of it is quite another. The police officer must be able to justify arrest. The Supreme Court further observed that if police officers do not wish to face legal or disciplinary action, they should see that arrests are met only 
after reaching a reasonable satisfaction about the complaint being true and the case being bona fide. The Supreme Court in Sila versus State of Maharashtra expressed concern about the safety and the security of women in police lockup and directed that a woman judge should be appointed to carry out surprise visits to police station to see that all legal safeguards are being enforced. Again in Sila versus Secretary Children at Society, the Supreme Court held that children should not be met to stay in the observation homes for too long. Dedicated workers must be found and after training, they alone should be employed in the children's homes. The juvenile court has to be manned by a judicial officer with some special training. The Court of Criminal Procedure is the most comprehensive procedural law of India dealing with administration of criminal justice. The court provides special provisions which protect women from possible atrocities in criminal proceedings. Arrest is apprehension of a person by legal authority resulting in deprivation of his liberty. In making an arrest, the police officer or other persons making the same actually touch or confines the body of the person to be arrested unless there is a submission to the custody by word or action. The proviso of section 41 clause 1 of CRPC stipulates that where a woman is to be arrested unless the circumstances indicate to the contrary her submission to the custody on an oral intimation of arrest shall be presumed and unless the circumstances otherwise requires. Unless the police officer is a female, the police officer shall not touch the person of woman for making her arrest. The Court of Criminal Procedure Amendment Act 2005 inserted subsection 4 to the section 41 which provides that no woman shall be arrested after the sunset and before sunrise, save in the exceptional circumstances and where such exceptional circumstances exist, the woman police officer shall, by making a written request, obtain the prior permission of the judicial magistrate of the first class, within whose jurisdiction the offense is committed or the arrest is to be met. Safeguarding the interests of women is also found in the proviso of section 47 of CRPC. The police officer making the arrest may search the arrested person. If it is necessary to cause a female to be searched, the search shall be by another female with strict regards to decency. If the arrested person is a female, the examination of his body shall be met only by or under the supervision of a female medical officer and in case the female officer is not available by a female registered medical practitioner. In Sila versus State of Maharashtra, the Supreme Court held that it is the duty of the police officer making arrest to see that the arrested females are segregated from male and calf in female lockup in the police station. Even though police officers are empowered to require attendance of witnesses, the court exempted male persons under the age of 15 years or women from attendance at any place other than the place in which such male person or women reside. The Juvenile Justice Care and the Protection of Children Act 2000 is the most comprehensive law ever passed by the Parliament for the welfare of children in India. The Act deals with two categories of child, child in conflict with law and 
child in the need of care and protection. Juvenile in conflict with law means a juvenile who is alleged to have committed an offense and has not completed 18 years of age as on the date of commission of such offense. As the egg intends to create a child-friendly approach in adjudication and the disposition of matters related to them. The term apprehension is used in lieu of the term arrest. Section 10 of the Act provides that as soon as if a juvenile in conflict with law is apprehended by police, he shall be placed under the charge of special juvenile police unit or designated police officer who shall produce the juvenile before the board without any loss of time but within the period of 24 hours of his apprehension excluding the time necessary for the journey from the place where the juvenile was apprehended to the board. The proviso to the section states that a juvenile in conflict with law shall not be placed in police lockup or laws in a jail. Rule number 11, clause 11 of Juvenile Justice, Care and the Protection of Children Rule 2007 provides that police or child welfare officer concerned shall not be required to register an FIR or file a charge sheet except where the offense alleged to have committed by the juvenile is of a serious nature such as rape, murder, or when such offense is alleged to have been committed jointly with adults. Women and children are the most vulnerable sections of the society. They depend on male and adult international human rights laws as well as national laws particularly case laws and criminal laws of india provides for special provisions which safeguard women and children from arbitrary arrest and detention however such issues have still been a lingering problems in the northeastern states of india as the law and the order of the region has not been improved and being far from normalcy. On top of it, the state is unable to solve decade-long problem of insurgency once and for all, which is one of the contributory factor for arbitrary arrest and detention. In such situation, the law enforcement agencies have to be reoriented, sensitized, and trained with laws relating to women and children so as to prevent arbitrary arrest and detention of women and children.